What happened? I thought he called me Bo. You thought you had the pleasure of being called Bo? No, I was going to say that was rude you on You think you part. could do what I do? I didn't say that. Okay. What do you think? You can go right into his skin. I'm just saying we're doing a podcast. You think he can do what we're I do? We're doing a podcast and he's calling me Bo. He's not, I don't think he's I think we sell Teddy it. very short. You do. When you guys did the podcast without me, it was Teddy holding it together. <laughs> it was Ted balancing you and Aaron like a cap trying to pull back the hell. He was how do you feel with us, with me and Aaron? Not necessarily. Those I, two went off topic very, very quick and fast. Of course, we get an alarm right in the beginning. Yep. Oh, shit. Just as we were starting to gel, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we're just getting them older. It's, they, they know. There's some guy <laughs> snickering right now at the fire department. <laughs> yeah. They it's know. Jeff Bezos left. You see, you see that laugh? No. You can see that video? I guess this is all just staying in because it's, it's like good a, content. It's like an evil laugh. Yeah, you got to hear it, dude. It's like the guy asked Bezos if... Uh, oh, what, what, I forgot the question was. What but, do you guys think about that? Do you like the uh, the whole billionaires going to space? Yeah, do you? Actually go to space, though. Like, don't be... Yeah, don't, where, they, where they go to the outer rim? You can't be half rim? pregnant with it. What the hell? <laughs> what does that mean? He went to the outer rim of space. Yeah, he was four plane space. I'm thinking he went yeah. to Mars. <laughs> yeah, he didn't get in there. <laughs> He's rubbing the little bean box. He didn't really get in, though. Space Virgin. Yeah. He's rubbing the little, uh, the bean star. Well, Branson, he did the same thing, right? But wasn't he there for, for a little longer? I don't know how, how deep he got. Didn't someone just go to space and, and spear he got to? Yeah, yeah. No, that was Bezos did the skydiving. Bezos did that skydive? Yeah. That went to the, like in the astronaut shoot? And yeah. Those, yeah. The blue ones. <sighs> Damn, man. You impressed? How much money oh. this guy's got? <laughs> what the hell? He's got enough I, to throw around and go to fucking space. No, that's bullshit. They're still space virgins. Yeah, space virgins, 100%. W- without a doubt. You didn't fully get in. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode <laughs> of the Nerd Soup Podcast. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Anthony, JQ, Nash, and Teddy, and we are back to talk about the world of Hollywood movies tv video games have a lot of stories to talk about today oh, we yeah. will be reviewing finally black widow actually already recorded that with aaron so we're just going to plug that in that was like a week ago wasn't first it? topic yeah yeah <laughs> well the the audio cutting out for the last podcast was just an absolute tragedy oh that it was, stings it was a good podcast it cut out after two minutes but what that's you going do? to practice at seven o'clock in the morning and you've got your cleats at home yeah and you know that you need to get <laughs> yeah. or you've have an away game and you brought your home jersey. <laughs> Coach, I need one of the back. Gotta wear <laughs> double zero. <laughs> That's uh, so true. Well, speaking of basketball, we'll also be reviewing the new Space Jam movie, which has been very divisive on Twitter. The discourse surrounding it has been kind of hilarious from both sides. <laughs> uh, and the main topic for today's podcast, the new Dune trailer. That's how we'll be starting this Dune. video. Remember it's all like caps. Doom. Yeah, it's like they, Doom. It's yeah. like, like shout out MF Doom. R.I.P. They need to stop marketing this damn movie. It, the trailer was a good start here. It was really good. But well, listen to the podcast, to iTunes, more. Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Bo Soup, Anthony JQ Nash, Teddy Nerd Soup on all social medias. Yeah, let's jump into it. The Dune let's trailer. Do, do the, these actors not want to like, like, show this movie out? I don't get it. I see no press from it at all, and it's been it's coming out soon. I think very, the pushbacks have hurt the marketing. I think that the marketing team hasn't really found that window of when to really start rolling things out. Yeah. And I think there have been some issues with the marketing, like the character posters that we talked about on the pod that got erased. It was weird how they were marketing the names of the characters more so than the actors. Right. That's the selling point. You show people this trailer, they're going to recognize Momoa and Brolin and Oscar Isaac. Th- these are the people you need to push. It's almost like they're trying to like big dog and like say, we're, we're better we're than We're too that. good to, like this movie is good enough to post the characters that no one really knows about. Well, let them talk their shit then, because the, the trailer is fantastic. Yeah, it was a talking, good trailer. But they're talking their good. shit, and they're going to hurt the movie by not getting people's eyes on it, because this movie's base is a book that I guarantee not a lot of people read right, or it's seen a classic, the movie back in the day. But how much, uh, it's not really on the minds of people yeah, today. exactly. It, Aaron, I even made the point that Lord of the Rings wasn't that big when that movie came out, but maybe it, maybe it was more on the minds of people. Maybe they could get away with that, but... Uh, a lot of people want this movie to do well because they want to continue to see films like this and they want the franchise to continue. But but wasn't Lord of the Rings one of the first high fantasy, big budget movies to come out? Right, yeah, kind of you know first I mean? of its kind, yeah. right. We've seen other big budgeted sci In terms movies. of like advertising it like that, like it's a big movie, it's a big blockbuster, like all this CGI, like the, people are going to see it to see this high fantasy movie. Well, not, the last so podcast movie. you mentioned, like why aren't they on the talk shows? Yeah. Why aren't they on Kimmel? <laughs> 
Yeah, I guess so people are still worried about. about COVID and everything. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to actually, I, I, I guess I shouldn't say it's tough to market this movie because of social media nowadays, but I, I mean, to go do interviews and, you know, it, and if you see these Zoom interviews with most of the, like most of the time with sports players or like just anything in general, it's fucking horrendous. You They're hear so that awkward. sound it or it's grainy or so. I mean, it, in in that aspect, it must be hard to advertise this. But again, I have to agree with Bo. I mean, the pushback with this movie. This movie was supposed to come out like what a year and a half ago. Yeah, you know, a long time ago. Uh, you know, you don't want to. Uh, <laughs> I guess they already well, you don't blew their load like the, with this, yeah, you, you know, but it. make sure that, okay, this is it, you know, and especially with all the, uh, I know, are we going to get kicked off of YouTube if I mention COVID or Delta, but I mean, it's, it's starting to come back. So the movie theaters might close again. So you don't really know until Yeah, that's what definite, we talked about on Tuesday. You know? that <laughs> that's bad we, timing right now. We may Delta. be in a situation <laughs> where we get to October 22nd when this movie is supposed to come out and- we could be living in a totally different world. We were, yeah. back, back a year and a half ago, we were in the same spot right now. There's no way it's getting like this. We're not getting like like the world's not going to shut down. We'll just breeze by past it, and the whole world shut the whole world shut down for like well, a, a year. Well, as for the trailer, what did you guys think? Anything it stand out? A, it looks amazing. I mean, the scope of the movie. Somebody tweeted, "There's no way they shot this on Earth." It really Real. feels like a <laughs> Bezos planet. took them up there <laughs> to tickle the stars. You a know little what? Bit. Then I'd support Bezos if he was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> he was helping Dune. Timothy yeah. Chalamet looks amazing, and oh, see, I, I want to see more of him. I have to disagree with you. What do you mean? So I am I'm not familiar with the novel itself or how the characters portrayed, but um, I just can't picture Timothy Chalamet in that role. He's coming. I, he's coming to his own. He's got to find his way. He's like a short little petite twink that I just can't take him serious. That's the whole, like, well, that, you that's, know, that's the whole presence of of his character, though. Is that he, like he really is, isn't supposed to be the one, and he is the one. But the thing is, like you don't. Ah, when I was talking about this with Bo, I brought up that like uh, you know I don't know how this portrayed, but he said that it's supposed to be someone that's depressed, that's ahead of his time, that's wise. See. Uh, Timothy Chalamet's got clear ass skin, beautiful <laughs> hair, well put together. He's very skinny. I, I mean, this it, it, that is the opposite of depression. I mean, if you need somebody to play the role, I would say Adam Driver. Just oh, would tall looks too like too old. Too old. He is supposed so to it's got to be younger. He's supposed. Uh, it looks like maybe in like the movie 18? they're going for under twenty. Yeah. In the novel, I'm pretty sure he's fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, he is so young. he's supposed to be, and I get that. You're okay. saying that, you know, nothing out of all the performances so far. I think Josh Brolin has made the biggest impact. Yeah. Hearing him in that one I scene, to say it. <laughs> like I can't I am, wait to see his character. Or Zendaya, <laughs> right? Yeah, Zendaya she was stuck very out. good with the voiceover. All the Freeman look great. I think all of that's the thing with Paul's character is that he's just all of his friends are adults, so he doesn't know how to be a kid. He never really had that chance. It's We've seen it a million times, the prince who's being groomed to one day rule for his father. So mm -hmm. all his relationships are with adults that are just so hard on him to, you know, live up to the family name, live up to the name of House Atreides. But I think Gurney Halleck was the clear standout when he tells him to smile. And that voice, you just <laughs> close your eyes and you hear Thanos at this, at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's it's going to be hard to get Thanos out of my head when I hear, him, when I hear Josh Brolin talk for and, any, act, any yeah. uh, actor now. Well, that voice, character. that voiceover role is just so iconic. And when he tells him, you don't, you know, the Harkonnens aren't humans, they're vicious fighters. And you see Dave Bautista's character. He, he looks incredible in yeah. that role. We got a better the look Baron. at Stellan Skarsgård as the Baron. Um, but just like I said, the scope of all of it, the action sequences, when Paul says it's going to be a massacre, I mean, that whole fight it's scene. Very convincing that it's going to be a massacre. Bro, their outfits look slick. I love their outfits. That last scene with with the uh, Chalamet, yeah, Paul Trades and that in that costume, yeah. The, I forget what they're called. They're like these wetsuits that recycle your wet water. Suit. Okay. Um. Oh, like a uh, scuba diver. <laughs> yeah, basically. Okay. So the, the planet is just, sandy cheeks. No <laughs> water on the planet. So yeah, like, if you wipe sweat off your forehead, they'll be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Yeah. Like you need to preserve that. Really? Yeah. It's yeah. it's that desperate. Oh, I need to get into this a little bit. <laughs> it's unfortunately, very, it's, I only got halfway through the the book. You still have time. I don't know how. I, I don't now know how this caught up on me. Pressing you, <laughs> it, it it caught up on me. You, you got to wait for part two since this is part yeah. one. <laughs> so wait, <laughs> wow! I, I, I honestly could probably wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, they're gonna split it in half. Um, so the whole premise of part one is that the spice planet, Arrakis, the, Arrakis, 
the barons want to take over the spice planet, right? So it's kind of a little finger type of play. The barons push for House Atreides to take over this planet. It's a very valuable planet because of that spice yeah. substance. It's the oil equivalent in this universe. But they push them into that planet, into ruling that planet, because they know how chaotic it is and they want to use this to take them down. Okay. Um, and like Zendaya says that these people have been raiding this planet for how many years, hundreds of years, thousands of years, trying to take the spice because mm -hmm. it is so valuable. So that's how it starts. It's, they get pushed into this and it's seen to them, it's presented as a gift. It's an upgrade. You know, it's like if you're a lower house in Game of Thrones and you're given Casterly Rock, that's the equivalent, but sure. it's a time bomb. So that's really the premise here. It's, it's two houses that have had rival that have been rivals for thousands of years and it's coming to a head once again here. If there and, was, uh, you know, to Nash's point, yeah, Chalamet, maybe they're saving a lot of his better moments. Exactly. Yeah. He's kind of just moping around in these trailers. Uh, you, you just said the him premise as, of him. He was a very electric. Yeah, well, then, like I don't. When I picture Timothy Chalamet, I just don't picture a this warrior. Character. Yeah, just like I well, don't. It is, they they describe it in the books that it is kind of it's a little silly as well. That he is a slender, he's petite, like you said. He's right. a small dude, but he's been trained by the best. Okay. So, Speaking of trainers, spot on casting for Duncan Idaho with <laughs> yeah. Jason Momoa. Momoa, that's going to be your favorite character. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah. Well, I can see that he's already, oh, it looks like you gained a little muscle, right? And he's like, really? And he's like, no, no, not at all. <laughs> so it should he be right on my alley. He will Playboy. be a great comic relief in there. All he does is just fucking kill. That's his whole thing. <laughs> Heart of gold. They all have hearts of gold in House of Trades. But now, are we talking kill, like Wick style, or what kind of kill are we doing here? Swordsman. So yeah, Oof. yeah. They don't have so gas. A little, a little Kill Bill action. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's know, badass. You, you want to know what will that's turn electric. Nash? I think what I think what will turn you to be pro uh, Timothy Chalamet is gonna be that box scene when he's asked to stick his hand in the box with the witches to like sh prove that he's not that he's like fearless. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the whole thing with his character is a lot of the obstacles that he's mental. facing. Yeah, a lot of them are mental, the physical obstacles as well. It's a lot. It's not, it's not something that yeah. a, a kid is supposed to be able to withstand. And he has that line that maybe, you know, what if I can't do this to his dad? His dad's like, you know, great men don't look to Lee. They're called the to Lee. The typical, and, what if I can't do this? Yeah. But, oh. That's a but good that's line, a though. That's a good line, though, with, uh, his what his dad says. I don't want to. It's going to be emotional. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, they have a great father-son relationship. Tearing up a little bit? Yeah, I, I almost did. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, but it is more, it's set up conventionally, but they do break those conventions as the story goes on. So it's you know, the whole destiny, chosen one. Don't buy into that too much. It's it's more Game of Thrones than it is uh, Harry Potter. Okay. Um, All right. Well, what was the budget for this movie? Had to have been north of 200 million, you would yeah. think. I was going to say 220. This could be the best looking movie you can see time. it. Yeah. You can definitely see it. Even in this if it's trailer. not good. At least in the trailer, you can see this 220 coming out. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine what it's going to look like. And that's why people want it so desperately to do well because they spent all this money on a property that is well known to us in our circles, but maybe not to the general public. Do you watch this movie if it comes out on HBO Max or Ooh, something no. big? No, that's a big screen you don't movie. Just, you don't do it, right? Yeah. No matter what. <laughs> it's not coming out this year. <laughs> in November, you can get on HBO Max. But it's gonna be in the, it's gonna be in the theaters next next year in April. Do you wait? Do you okay. wait till April? That would be a horrible business plan. But no, I'm just saying if, it, if, that, if that happens. <laughs> well, we know that Teddy's not in the front office at HBO. So okay, that was the out, dumbest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Under those circumstances, yeah. where you're president and Warner COVID's Brothers. back, COVID's back, and <laughs> okay, so if if they're like, get you know what, we have to fucking put this out. It's been yeah. too long at this point. Yeah. If it's one of those situations, yeah. I, I mean, I hope it's not. Yeah, That's but you thing. can't do that on a TV. Like, you need to go oh, out and buy a yeah, projector, be... like one of those that expands over, like, the backyard on a beautiful summer night, like, let's yeah. say, or a crisp fall night. You would need to get Popcorn. a 120-inch screen. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and just fucking project that shit I'd on only watch house. it in your basement on that TV. <laughs> yeah, or, TV or that. Or we find someone who's got a better setup than I do, <laughs> which I'm sure someone out there does, because the way that you can get these projectors these days and just, my, my cousin has a setup like that, 100 inch projector screen. Serious? Yeah, it's awesome. He watches sports on it. He plays video wow. games on it. Yeah, we have a, uh, we did, she uh, doesn't live here anymore, but she had a movie theater in her house. Sienna? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to really? name drop. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, she had like uh, oh, like wow. I wish I was four or six. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Sienna. But yeah, she had like <laughs> six like chairs and a huge screen. Oh. Oh That's no. my dream. Oh no, I'm very excited for this movie. And I'm very excited to see what's to come because you got to think they're, they're going to put more out. Press wise, at least. Yeah, I think we'll see trailers. Maybe one more trailer. We'll we get some. There was a little. There was a teaser looks. before this, right? Yeah, there was a, a teaser. while ago. Yeah, it ended with the giant worm at the end. Yeah, we got to better look at the worm yep. here. That's gonna be one. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be a great scene. <laughs> the last <laughs> bull worm. Yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah, it really is. No it's way. Exactly. That. Yeah. That's great. But the great thing about the worms is that they just they're there. You know. It's everyone. It's, they, they plan around them. It's not like yeah. It's not like it's a once in like a once in a lifetime thing that they come up. It's a regular that these giant worms show up. Yeah, <laughs> and that a lot of the things they do with their tech attracts them. Yeah. So all the politics and the scheming is going on, and then you just have these giant killer fucking worms who are basically impossible to kill. People try to plan attacks with the worms, like to set you up for a worm attack. Yeah. Damn, that's Sick. cold. Yeah, that got is this cold. giant ass earthworm just fucking up your day. <laughs> yeah, it's really dope. Damn, and the trailer looks incredible. I'm so excited for this. Hopefully, we get into an early screening. Yeah, the the trailer alone looks like a movie. It's like, all right, if that just came out, I'd be like, that's fantastic. The trailer, no, was sp- no storyline at all. Like, and that's not, uh, I guess, my parfait, if you prefer, right. to say that that's not like my uh, genre of movie, and I'm still. I'm, I don't want to say I'm like through the roof ecstatic. You know, that'd be phony, corny ass of me to say that. But you, it need, is, to, you need to start being that way right now. I guess. But I, it, 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 it does look very, very you good. You got to get the fans like him. That's that's what, that's what I was trying to say about the press releases and shit. And get so on you're it. stereotyping. No, but it's like fans like Canceled. you that don't really know about Dune. It's like it, this movie needs to be seen by everyone. I think I think it does. Well, are you going to see this in theaters? Whenever it comes out, yeah. I mean, if it is in theaters, I would like. That's a movie you can't like watch it. You know, we got to make plans. We got once those tickets go on sale, we got to see that Thursday night. Like a pack of hyenas, we need hey. to be on that because hey. that's going to sell out big time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you pushing to get a third ticket, or is it going to be you and it's only every you and Aaron? Two. It's only two. Yeah, it's always that's annoying, <laughs> Mister Critic. You show up early. <laughs> yes, I'm both. Fake mustache. <laughs> Top hat. It's got a fedora. <laughs> I, think, I think me and Aaron go with the trench coat and I put him on my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. We'll just hide you in the popcorn bag. <laughs> like we sneak in candy to sneak into Teddy. All right. Let's move on to the good trailer. Good conversation. Let's move on to the Black Widow review. We're just going to plug that in. So I'm going to throw it Finally, to Bo and Aaron. And yeah, take it away, guys. I'm not going to sit back and, like, judge it, like, oh, if this happened before Infinity War, what would I have received it better, or would it have been better? Just taking it as when we got it in the film itself, I felt like, I, I didn't think it was bad. I think it was a just fine movie. Kind of probably ends up in that, like, 15 range for me when we're talking about the MCU. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, after a year and a half of pushbacks and waiting for this movie, that's not the reason why I'm disappointed in it, but it's just disappointing in general that, you know, our first time back into the MCU uh, cinematically was a little sub... uh, I don't want to say subpar, maybe just par. It was fine. It's teetering on subpar. Yes. There were some things that I enjoyed, but for the most part, it just felt bland. I was... Maybe that's my fault for going in with some expectations, but um, in terms of like Winter Soldier, espionage, spy thriller level, you know, that's hard to do, especially since Winter Soldier is my favorite MCU movie. But even like 80% of that, I would have been hopeful for, and I think they could have pulled it off, but it just didn't hit, hit for me on that type of level in terms of the mission itself, the espionage aspect, the action aspect. I think what really drove to me to put it where I rank it is mostly just the characters. Right. The family dynamic stands out because the family dynamic is believable. I think what Winter Soldier did so well is these heroes are always going to win. They're always going to come out on top. But in the middle of Winter Soldier, you're starting to think to yourself, holy shit, Captain America has his hands full here. And that's what the great spy thrillers do. They create that sense of paranoia and urgency for the characters to achieve their goals. And you never really felt that in this movie. And people have made the critique that maybe if it led into the MCU or if it came at a different time, that kind of works against it. I think that could have worked in its benefit, where you could have taken the chance to say, hey, this story exists as its own little thing, as its own little James Bond-type spy thriller. 
And they had the the nods to James Bond. She's watching the movie. The villain is very much a James Bond villain. And obviously that relates to her backstory in the comics, being a former KGB spy. But how many times did James Bond face off against Russians in those movies? It, it, all of it was there. They even got a Bond girl to play the Taskmaster. Well, the and thing- as you said that the characters were good, but the Taskmaster is oh, also no, no. a character that let people down. The protagonist characters. The protagonists, yeah. The antagonists were fucking terrible. Taskmaster... I mean, like for three quarters of the Oops, movie, they did it again. <laughs> three quarters of the movie, huh, Lord forgive me if I'm going back to the old me, Marvel <laughs> villains. That's Feige, yeah, yeah. Um, they just can't resist it. For three quarters of the movie, you have a a villain that doesn't say anything with no depth at all. It masters all everyone's fighting styles and it can use it to adapt and fight, which is a very cool concept. And the trailers show that very well. And the way like they had that shot of her like studying the film and everything, right. That's barely explored. And it's not even cool, like, what she does. Like, oh, what, she uses that shield a couple times? She does the Wakanda pose for a split second? Maybe she does, like, a drop knife catch thing? But, like, you don't really get that, that she's a master of all uh, all these different fighting abilities. And, and I think there's so much more potential with that character, especially when you don't give any depth to it until, like, the last 20 minutes of the movie. Yeah. Along with trying to introduce this villain that they've been talking about all movie for the first time, and he fucking sucks, too. I think I enjoyed him more than the Taskmaster. He got annoying quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, very quickly. And... I mean, it parallels Winter Soldier. The villain reveals her face at somebody from the protagonist's past. I just didn't feel anything for that. I think I'm trying not to judge movies based on what I would have liked to have seen. But when you give me those opening credits, it's the same thing as Wolverine Origins. That's your movie. I mean, if you really want to get into the family dynamic here and how they had to survive as just kids together after being abandoned by their surrogate parents who clearly were being pressured by the Russian government and the KGB, even if they had those emotional attachments, that's really interesting. And and like you said, the protagonists, to me, they're good, but I also, I don't think I needed the family stuff. I think maybe I could have just used Florence Pugh's y- Yelena. Okay. Because the movie very much is kind of a passing of the baton between, between the two of them. Like I said, I think I would have preferred them kind of globetrotting, systematically taking out this Black Widow network. I think that could have been a better story just a smaller story. And the, the movie is at its best when it is on the ground level, when it's doing the, the James Bond spy stuff, you know, running across rooftops. It's contradiction, not ground level. But, you know, like keeping it simple. The technology isn't so ridiculous in the movie. There's not much magic. I, I, like I said, Red Guardian is funny, but I can't remember anything he said that was funny after watching it. You I know, think the f- I giggled a couple of times. I think the biggest laugh I got was when he thought he was he got to tell a uh, communication system in his ear yeah, that was funny actually yeah it's like you don't have anything in your ear yeah so <laughs> well in the back of my mind i was also wondering if he fought against um the captain america from winter soldier yes uh i can't remember his name bradley right yeah isaiah bradley yeah isaiah bradley i wonder if that's the captain america he fought against yeah because that's the timeline wouldn't really necessarily work out yeah yeah he was talking about like in the 80s but <laughs> but rachel wise which rachel vise i mm-hmm. think that's how it's pronounced Good performance, but, you know, maybe I could have used more of their actions portraying how they felt about each other rather than them just saying it. Because it is all very believable that they would come to view themselves as a true family. But what they're doing, there were too many lulls in this movie, where the moments between them where they are opening up to each other... I just didn't enjoy it. I think a lot of like with the characters, like obviously we've seen, we've been watching Black Widow for almost ten years now, and we we know that character. But it was nice to get a little bit more into her, and I, I really I've always enjoyed the character very much. And I think Elena was is a great addition to kind of pass that baton to for her to be the next Black Widow because Florence Pugh is probably one of the fastest rising stars in Hollywood right now, if not already just a star in general. So I think her ability to play that character in that role was very believable. And I had a great time every time she was on screen. Uh, But like you said, the problem lies when they stray away from that. And I I didn't think the action sequences were bad by any stretch, but I think it was nothing that made me go, wow, there was no highway scene in Winter Soldier. For it to be Black Widow's only solo movie after this long and for it to just to be middle of the road, I, I find very disappointing. And I wish they would have done more 
I guess, with the upbringing. Like, because a lot of people have said that that's the best part of the movie. Yeah. So it was those first 10, 15 minutes. So, well, I said this on a podcast a few days ago, or no, the Loki review, that this would have worked better, so much better as a TV show. And I really, I truly believe that you would have gotten that development. I guess they felt like they owed Scarlett Johansson this movie because people have been asking for it for years. Like you mentioned, we've been with this character for a long time. Maybe Scarlett Johansson doesn't want to do television. But a six-episode, six-to-eight-episode Black Widow series that's taking place in the past, taking place in the current timeline, I think you would have gotten more out of that character. Because people, a lot of people are saying that, and I'm not trying to start an, an argument, but did we really learn that much more about this character? I think a lot of the things that they showed us were kind of things we knew. Mm-hmm. Like the the Red Room and, you know, obviously her not having the ability to have children. And, of course, Florence Pugh's went through the same thing. I, I, this movie should have been darker to me. It should have been darker and it should have been more complex. Like, they keep talking about how corrupt these characters are and how they do these shady things. And I wanted to see that through their actions. Like, yeah, maybe they do care about each other, but they're also pulled in these different directions because they've been thrown into this world and it's really messed with their heads. And maybe as Black Widow re enters that world, she becomes, she reverts back to her old ways of being a, a two faced spy. And even like the argument, like we touched on before, just if it happened before or after, I don't think you need necessarily like knowing the outcome of her character shouldn't be a deterrent for uh, tension and stakes because obviously, like you said, some of like the James Bond movies or even like Captain America went to soldier. We know Captain America is not going to die. Yeah. We know Daniel Craig, James Bond is not going to die in his first movie, but some of the better movies early on in the franchise, even though, you know, these characters are going to make it out. They still do a great job of creating tension, intrigue, and kind of putting you on a, on a journey where you're fully invested and, you know, on the edge of your seat. And this just fails, failed to do that. Right. I wanted more of what Florence Pugh's character was doing in the beginning, trying to track down her former comrades, trying to give them this drug so they can snap out of this brain control device thing that Drakeoff was using on all these widows. And it all just gets solved rather easily in the end. The spy stuff, like I said, it wasn't that great. There wasn't a moment like in Winter Soldier, a highway scene with the action, or even like a, a Mission Impossible when he memorizes all the names on the list mm-hmm. and that's how he defeats the villain. There was nothing that that clever in terms of the narrative or the action sequences. It's a lot of what we've seen before in other spy movies and even in the Winter Soldier. And there's so many parallels with the Winter Soldier and none of the atmosphere. Right. And yeah, I think like the big... Uh in terms of like the payoff, in terms of like outsmarting your opponent and getting the upper hand was the, the pheromone thing. Yeah, she breaks her nose. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> just bangs her head on the desk and he's just trying to, I don't know, he, he needs to like keep like a cologne on him. I don't know. Or injection. It's just his natural musk. <laughs> Seems very musky. Yeah, he does seem like a stinky guy. Like your old gym teacher. You know? <laughs> yeah, that was the big moment. Like, okay, we've we foiled his plot. He obviously is is killed. By the way, you know like those like on the androids you have the to get your passcode you swipe the design? Yeah. His was terrible. It was just a regular swipe up with the ring. <laughs> Not that complex. No. Yeah, I hate those things. I never figured out how to use them. The swipe type is also pretty hard. I use a swipe type. Oh, yeah? You're a swipe typer? Yeah. Oh, that's impressive. Maybe you could uh, be an international criminal. (laughs) No, thank you. (laughs) Marissa was like, um, what was the line? I I use the one thing that there's too much of in this world, little girls. (laughs) Marissa was like, huh? Yeah. Is that even, what? (laughs) What what point are they trying to make there? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I I just didn't, I I didn't vibe with him at the end. Like, it wasn't like a reveal. It's like, oh my God, look at this guy who they've been talking about for so long. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, continuity, you have to forgive the continuity issues. But the way they talk about Budapest, she talks about it like it was this great time. Budapest. Budapest. Right, right, yeah. Um, And Hawkeye's like, we remember Budapest very differently. I mean, what's the... What doesn't Black Widow remember about that? <laughs> that she's just recalling it willy-nilly. You murdered somebody's daughter. <laughs> That's a traumatic thing to do. And yeah, it obviously sticks with her. Yeah. <laughs> Hawkeye's like, do you remember what we did there? Yeah. <laughs> what we were tasked to do? And they get into that, too, that, you know, in order for her to gain the trust of S.H.I.E.L.D., she has to do, you know, taking out a terrible person but sacrificing an innocent there. And that's what Cap talked about in Avengers, that S.H.I.E.L.D. has blood in their hands just like Hydra does or, or Loki. But it's almost like with Falcon and the Winter Soldier where they kind of just told you what the show was rather than 
showing us through actions, yeah. through character decisions. And it was all there. It was all there to be a great little spy thriller. You don't, you didn't need Black Widow 2. This could have been its own little thing. It's, it's, an, it's like an Elseworlds movie, like DC was doing. So I don't need the connection to the larger MCU. This was their chance to, to get away from the larger MCU. That's what more people want. That's what people seem to be clamoring for. They hate the cookie. They don't hate the cookie cutter stuff, but they get frustrated by it. They get kind of tired with it. And a lot of people are enjoying this movie, so I don't want to say they blew it. They just blew it for me. So yeah, of course. And put that on the trough board. Bo didn't like it. Mm-hmm. How could we get Bo to like the next one? <laughs> but even the end credit scene, that's... Dude, I saw Ultron trending the other day, like before we saw it, and I was like, we're about to get Big Daddy Ultron back. <laughs> and it wasn't that. No, no, it wasn't. I hope he does come back eventually. Yeah. But I really hope there's an Ultron, Ultron bot out there. But so Julie Louis Dreyfus' character who recruited US Agent is now recruiting Elena to kill Hawkeye for some reason? Yeah. What did Hawkeye do? Well, I guess it's a rumor or he's, she's... Think, they don't yeah. seem very informed. Yeah. Well, Jimmy Renner, I think... Almost got canceled, so maybe that's like that's she's taking good, right, more yeah. obligation to like cancel him in the MCU. Holy like, shit, that's super meta. Very meta, yeah. <laughs> but Civil War had just happened, and they haven't heard a word about it. Yelena, Red Guardian, mm-hmm. they think that she's just out there being a superhero and everything's mm-hmm. fine. So I, I guess maybe that's it. she's an easy character to manipulate because of that. Maybe she's just not in the the Western loop. So, yeah, but I don't know why you want to, like... Right, why is the government going after Hawkeye? And Yelena, I guess you can manipulate it, like, because no one was there with her when they got the Soul Stone, so you can yeah, yeah. say, like, oh, maybe you sacrificed her, or regardless, just to get her on your side for some reason. Um, yeah, it feels like characters... I wonder if she will be in Hawkeye. I think she'll be in Hawkeye. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think she will. Because I don't know what else they could be teasing. Did they confirm a show starring U.S. Agent? Wyatt Russell's U.S. Agent? Maybe. Or part of something. Right. I think there was rumors about it. I don't hate that if they're setting up their own sort of suicide squad. But after seeing Loki finale, how does any of this matter? <laughs> <laughs> well, how does anything matter after watching? Well, no, in terms of like going like the next adventure. It's like, oh, Elena's going to go kill Hawkeye. Meanwhile, the whole multiverse <laughs> is just being destroyed. It's a good point. And this, this was kind of their chance to give us a story, a smaller story, before we get into all of that mm-hmm. ridiculousness. Um, and <laughs> Right. They're going to be running around doing things on Earth. Meanwhile, the, the big guys in the universe are going to be handling stuff that can just wipe out everything you're doing in a split second mm-hmm. with all the different converging timelines and a possible multiversal war. So, yeah, that's, that's going to be a question that's going to be on the minds of fans. Why, <laughs> why should we even bother with some of these shows? <laughs> And the story was by Jack Schaefer, who obviously did the story for Wanda, uh, WandaVision and directed by Kate Shortland. So like I said, I think a lot of people were happy with it. And I think with, with Jack Schaefer, I mean, some people would say she's two for two this year. Yeah. So that's kind of impressive. Well, it's, not, it's not like an a, a, a awful movie by any stretch. No, no. You, kinda ha- you do have to weight it against the other MCU movies. That's what's unique about when whenever we get an MCU movie. Yeah, and I think you always make the point, which I tend to agree with more and more, that like when people complain about the cookie cutter or comparing MCU to MCU, it's like when it's all connected as tightly as it is, it's kind of like... Yeah, I view it as like a TV series almost. Yeah. So if you're watching a TV series and from episode to episode, vibes are completely different. You obviously want to explore different things and get into deeper themes and keep it, but you still want to keep it the same show in essence. So I think that I don't really criticize those movie, these movies anymore if they are a little too familiar. Yeah. Because in, in that sense, when you think about it like that, it kind of makes sense for it to be the same. You can, I mean, there definitely are avenues to get into little darker themes, deeper themes, but at, at its crux and the atmosphere around it, you can always kind of tell it's MCU. So. Right. But you need more around that to set it apart, I think while still holding true to everything else and didn't do anything that really set itself apart. Yeah, it tried to exist in the corner of the universe where Winter Soldier exists and kind of Civil War because I think Civil War had more of the Marvel one-liners than than so Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, it makes you laugh th- through your nose. <laughs> lines here and there but it is very much taking what's happening in the movie seriously and i think black widow tried to do that as well and it's just a lesser effort for me haha ha, that was so it, that was such a good conversation that you just had there guys very inspirational good points good cadence wow i think i might see the movie now good chemistry. Watch it. 
You guys might have. I, actually, you guys didn't like it, right? <laughs> I t- I was just about to say I totally agree with everything that you said. It was fantastic. <laughs> it's just like the so, complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just gotta say both, and we'll just edit it. I really want to see the movie now, or I don't want to see the movie. Now. I I talked to Aaron about it, and he said it was fucking awful. Well, he said he wasn't a fan. He, he never liked puts it, it down. more than I did. Yeah, I think. He never, I was like, on the, cusp. the best. I was on the cusp of watching it or not, and now I'm not watching it. So thanks for ruining Black Widow for me. He can't. He doesn't. There's no hot takes with Aaron anymore. He's very, well, no, like, he he really is. He's like, become on the fence guy. Yes, exactly. I guess he like, the, doesn't uh, want to make a decision. He lost his hot takes with uh, all of his weight. <laughs> I guess they just went with it. Yeah. No, he's you, like scared to get like pressed back on, so he just says that. Yeah, it is what it is. I think I've scarred him from how aggressively I debate. You could be. You could have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's spicy. You want that? Yeah. I you never know? scarred Nash. I can I can barely get Nash to budge on his opinions. <laughs> mm. I I'm most... usually dead set on <laughs> even if it's completely wrong. I'm I'm dying on that on that hill. <laughs> you have to. You have to die on that hill. I'm go, I'm like a fucking captain on a ship. I'm like a quarter I'm bro. Going down. I can get flipped any second. Oh yeah, this guy's oh, my uh, God, yeah. on the fucking lifeboats before the women and children. <laughs> Me and Ruben go back that. and forth with opinions and you'll be dapping us up on every opinion. Yeah, exactly. like, yo, that's true, yo. That's true. Yo, you know that's a good point, man. The bait club with Teddy as the judge is just whoever speaks less. Yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> like, I, or who I, makes them laugh I, the I most. agree with it. <laughs> yeah. Comedy's gotta come into it as well. Well, I think we had differing opinions on Space Jam, so we'll see where Teddy lands after we have this conversation. Space oh. Jam two with new legacy starring LeBron James and the Looney Tunes coming back after 25 years. The <laughs> sequel to one of the most beloved movies of the nineties, one of the bo- most beloved movies on this podcast. Uh, and like I said at the top of the podcast, the discourse and the conversation surrounding this movie has been ridiculous from all angles i want to say up front yes we understand it's a kids movie it's not that (laughs) serious i don't know why kids movies get this pass now when they're terrible but no yeah space jam 2 what'd you guys think i didn't hate it interesting it was bearable the jokes were awful but it was bearable i didn't like where they went with it (laughs) but it was bearable (laughs) i knew what (laughs) i wasn't i personally i wasn't gonna like it regardless no i i wasn't gonna love it regardless of where they went with it because of how much i love space jam one and i knew that they were just doing this just to make money and it bothered me just because of that but i didn't like where they went with it they needed to keep it with the regular animation i hated that they went like this 3d animation i think it looked bad well yeah they you, you know they were trying to mix some old with the new um, but there were yeah. funny parts. That's why I, I did chuckle here. And there. Everything was all NBA internet jokes. Yeah. Like everything yeah. was all like, you know, when Lola throws LeBron, you know, an alley-oop and then does it Dwayne Wade. And then, you know, the uh, the Knicks being mentioned in this movie <laughs> drove me fucking bananas. Leave the Knicks alone. But it's obviously a money grab. This movie was just a giant money grab from. <laughs> There's no way it made oh, money. <laughs> No, but I'm just saying, like they it, tried. They yeah, tried they, to they. I mean, they did everything, and it, it debuted at number one, but it has a ways to go to match that budget. Yeah, everything that they did, they they probably knew this was going to be a terrible movie. Reading the storyline, and then you know they go, all right, well maybe this will draw some fans in. Game of Thrones, uh, Harry Potter, uh, The Matrix. Uh, I did Austin Powers. I liked, uh, dude, I liked all of that when he first became a tune. It's it's it, it had me up until they turned. Then until the basketball game, they had me up until the basketball game. That's the only part of the movie that I really enjoyed is when he first becomes a cartoon. I thought that was clever to change yeah. it up. Jordan gets sucked through the hole, and he's still Jordan, and he's with the tunes in Tune World. But now LeBron has a tune. I like the animation. Bugs Bunny's introduction. They're back and forth. Uh, I got chills. It's yeah. LeBron James meeting Bugs Bunny. That's why you yeah. love the original so much yeah. because it was someone who exists in our world, and it was like Jordan was privileged enough to be with the tunes and meet with these other icons. That Clearly don't exist. But, uh, you know, to push back, not to push back, but privileged, <laughs> you know, you say that this mo- movie is a money grab and you can't disagree with it. And people say, hey, the first one was a money grab, too. The first one was a gimmick, too. It's like, yeah, but it was original. <laughs> yeah, there are better. Like if you watch two commercials, one commercial can be good and the other one could be shit. They're both trying to sell you everything. Right. They're both trying to sell you something. And this idea that, you know, Hollywood. Hollywood has been about making money since the inception of Hollywood. Yeah. That has been the case, you know, since the beginning. Right. The difference is that the first one is just more enjoyable. It had better heart. I think it had better humor and similar jokes. The meta jokes commenting on the era. 
but it was just so much more organic in the original one. Yeah, this one felt very forced. It was corny. Um, See, I, I would have loved if they leaned into that because they changed directors a quarter of the way through. Um, that's I forget. never good. Right. And uh, the original director had better credits to his name and it looked like they were going in a different direction there in the beginning that it was going to be a commentary on how, you know, we keep abusing all this IP that everything's IP, IP, IP. And it's, look at this reference. Look at that. Look at yeah. that. When LeBron says, no, I'm not doing this. This is a horrible idea. I think that would have been the better premise because even the way that they worked in his son, you know, his son's obsessed with the IP and obsessed with gaming. And then he could have learned a lesson that maybe all of this isn't so great yeah. or something like that after being manipulated by Al G. Rhythm, who was the, probably the best part of the movie. Yeah. Don Cheadle. A little, a little Don like. Cheadle. I yeah. got to say, LeBron's acting was driving me insane. Which I, is funny with because. His family, I couldn't, I couldn't take those opening scenes. Well, that's directing. LeBron clearly isn't an actor. I know we look yeah, at him well, and, exactly. I no, know no, he's not an actor. I'm, I'm but... not defending it whatsoever. Yeah, the acting's oh, horrible, okay. but it's the difference between LeBron acting for Judd Apatow and Trainwreck, where it's passable. Right. Clearly not an actor, a non-actor, but that's the mark of an experienced director. Where I'm going to make sure we don't expose any of his obvious weaknesses as that's an actor because he's not an yeah, actor. Exactly. Yeah. He, 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 it's like he got exposed. That's a good point. This movie wanted him to act like he was Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, and it just it was hard to watch. The life lessons, yeah, sometimes. Like, right, the life lessons or the, that emotional moment he has with his son at the end. Like, I love you, man. Oh God. Yeah. I was in the middle I, of the game. Honestly, yeah. honestly, there's a game going on. Honestly, I fast forward oh. through that. <laughs> it's so crazy. The second the second he stopped to talk to his son, I fast forward until they were hugging. I couldn't take it. But even moments in the original, like Bill Murray showing up, there's not a moment like that in this movie. Yeah, Michael a B. Jordan. Far they tried. out there. Yeah, yeah. The Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> they tried. It's such an. I did like when Daffy was like, "You're supposed to get Michael A. Jordan." <laughs> Was Daffy Duck LeBron's second best coach of all time? <laughs> I mean, you know what it is? They called a timeout after a this guy uh, 734 to 0 run, <laughs> and they call a timeout. And it's like, he's still better than Ty Lu, and he's still better than fucking David Blatt. He's mm. better than David Blatt, Frank Vogel. Frank Vogel, yeah. And I, it's, I, they were on a 734 run, <laughs> and he, then you could call. And that's it. the basketball game was atrocious. Yeah, it, uh, it, was it was atrocious. Dude, but we're like fifty five minutes into the movie and they start the game, and there's an hour left in the movie. I'm <laughs> like, how long is this going to be? Seriously. And LeBron, they did the comparison. Jordan took twenty two shots in his game. LeBron only took five. So a lot of it serious? was that, goes, that just goes to show he's just so unselfish. <laughs> he's you know, a playmaker. Yeah, you know? yeah, Jordan hogging the ball. But no, it. it <laughs> That the gimmicks were just nonstop. Someone posted a meme that the Space Jam writers before the movie started, uh, it was just lines of coke. <laughs> That's what <laughs> the movie felt like. Like it was written by somebody who was on a fucking coke bender. <laughs> it was just something. It was, it was just something nonstop. With like the Dame Time thing it was really annoying. Like the characters, the, the way oh, they incorporated the NBA players time. was really bad. That Dame I Time thing like was the corniest Once again, thing. you go back to the original movie, it's so much more clever. The the little alien sneaking into the basketball game in the trench coat, getting them all to touch the ball in different yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, Danny DeVito as the villain. It's That's like another they, for they forced it. It was like they were, they were just forcing it. And, oh, damn, you were making a point. Uh, but you, you had the template to keep it simple. That's what's most frustrating part. Why, I guess the new, I, the video game is... It's a new age type of commentary, yeah. but a hundred percent, they still could have done more with the basketball aspect of that game. It was just gimmick after gimmick. And then the, the, the rap battle, like when they came out yeah, after halftime, PIG. All <laughs> he was spitting bars. No lies. Though. He did mic drop it. Yeah. I can't, I can't front that shit was, but when they came out all confident in the second half, it's just embarrassing <laughs> when you compare it to Michael Jordan's secret stuff. Yeah, yeah, LeBron did the face that he did behind Bosch, and that's what's supposed to motivate you, like a being goofy. <laughs> right. Like what? It, the, it's like they didn't even respect LeBron, honestly. Yeah, they all looked miserable playing. With it's him. almost like they didn't respect Space Jam the first one. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was very. Uh, the best way to put it, it was an adorable watch. Like, it was very adorable. It, it, it was cute. Times. It was yeah. a cute watch. It was the whole fundamentals versus having fun. You know. Um, Go for what you want in life. Did you, you know? like that though? The angle of LeBron being a dick, being a bad dad. Ah, uh, I don't. I don't know. I. I. I didn't even really think about that. I was more focused on like, 
His acting took me off of the of like. It was hard to watch. It was very hard to watch. <laughs> you know watch. what I mean? You can't even think about what's going on. It's just, yeah, just like how bad, how bad he's. Being. Even in the opening scene, when he's like, "Ooh, meatball," so it's my favorite. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? It, like, I, I, it's a different. I guess it's different from Jordan too. Well, first of all, like we said, we're very biased because we love the first one, you know, and it that is not a great movie, like a an amazing movie by any stretch of the imagination. Watch the but, mouth. <laughs> but it, it's just we are so we just love it so much but you just wouldn't see jordan just be all goofy like that compared to like lebron that i i don't i don't know jordan's I, very wooden and stiff in that first movie but he's still charismatic because they don't ask him to do too much they're key, he's michael jordan that's enough mm-hmm. he's there he's an nba player everyone knows who he is and like i said with lebron they were just asking him to do too much when that's what the tunes are there for. The tunes are supposed to, it's supposed to be the straight man put in this insane, wacky, toony world, loony toony world. Um, and once they strayed away from that, to me, is when the movie just downward spiral after they get to Mad Max world and they're recruiting all the different <laughs> characters from the different worlds. You didn't like that? I liked, well, I liked everything up until the game. I really did. I liked everything up until the game. This the game, movie. There's nothing to t- like, with Space Jam 1. There's so much to talk about from the game. It's like if you want to analyze the game, like if like to like joke around, analyze the game. You can. Yeah. You can't analyze anything in this game if you if you want to like joke it's around with chaos. your friends. Yeah. Yeah. The scoring. A, a I mean, thousand se- and thirty-seven. Like what? What is yeah. that? Yeah. The score. Uh, the senior discount points. Um, Granny sipping a martini. So at halftime, <laughs> that shit is badass. <laughs> that but, was funny. Yeah. Um, but no. The, when you watch the original, you feel like they're going to lose. Like, the Monstars are so much better than them. When Jordan makes that deal that he's going to be shooting, playing one-on-one for the rest of his life, they feel like real villains. Like, th- there's a desperation yeah. for them to win the game. And I, like you said, it's not the deepest or greatest movie of all time, <laughs> but you feel like you're watching heroes overcome villains. But they, and you never they, get the, those... It's a very simple thing to do in movies, and this movie can't even accomplish that. You don't know who you're rooting for. He's LeBron's playing his son, and then his son's on his team, and then Don Cheadle's freaking out. It's, if that's it's chaos. A, that's exactly how I felt. Like, how do you pin? How, how do you play a game against your son? Right. It's like and expect people to, to totally be on board unnecessary. With it. But in the first one, like you just said, they established their villains. Yeah, and it's the difference it's between. Just, <laughs> It's got more of a minimalist flavor, while this was just, we're going to throw everything against the wall. See, the thing is, with the first Space Jam, the dynamic between Jordan and Stan, who played Wayne Knight, yes. was unreal. Yes. And then Jordan, um, LeBron and Malik, I mean, it's like kind of like, it was like maybe five minutes of them, but he's the reason why that he got transferred into this world, basically. And also the son, playing the son, to touch up on that, his son pulled a total LeBron move by just switching teams when he was when they were losing, <laughs> right? I mean, like, yeah. did he or did he not? It's like, oh, he must really be related to him. They made yeah. a couple of jokes on that, which I found They made like yeah. eight of them. They made the Miami <laughs> Heat joke. Yeah. yeah. Bugs um, even took a shot at him. Uh, can we just talk about real quick, besides the movie, the... Marvin the Martian voice just being absolutely awful. You said that <laughs> earlier. I didn't see a problem with it. I, I didn't mind it. I'm sorry, you Ernest, but <laughs> if you don't have enough players, you will be disqualified. I could do it so much better than the, the guy was like, yeah, so if, uh, you know, I'm here taking over Earth, it's like, that's not Marvin the Martian. But see, that's such a, like, the original. It just has so many great one-liners. Yeah, like but that. that's like the eight. But I right. could at least do it better than what they had there. Right. I mean, that was, that was horrendous. It's not, it's like, he 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 could add like a, I don't know and and but think about it, man. a also, European accent. The soundtrack, the first Space Jam oh, soundtrack horrible. is iconic. Yeah, song after song after song. That's not an easy thing for movies to do. That's one of my biggest complaint with movies is when they use contemporary music. Corella was the worst. It was just every ten minutes there was a new drop of a song that was recognizable and so oh. But Space Jam, the the soundtrack gave the movie more personality when they brought in the. Do, 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 do. Oh. You just there get chills. There's not a, there's there not a scene one like that, There wasn't one song. Bugs and Daffy going to steal back his sneakers, getting attacked by the dog, and then Jordan warming up in the gym for the first time. 
That's not nostalgia. I'm dude. getting that's... chills right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I might watch Space Jam. <laughs> like, and also, it dropped when we were three. It's not like we watched it in theaters and we're like, yeah. this is, a, you know, we watched it in like the 2000s. Yeah, and that didn't hit home for us because we right, weren't we like Jordan like guys. No, you know, like it would have been like different LeBron. if it was like Kobe or, yeah, yeah and we're LeBron guys. But um, the only one song I do have to say that bumped was when uh, Dom came down from the middle. It was that rap song. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of, I was like, ooh, what is this? Laughing. But then, you know, they got music, you know, Damian Lillard right. while doing the Dame Time and the wave that he did on Paul George, you know, like, bro, it was just so fucking corny at times. It was forced. It was, yeah, that's the best way to put it. It was an adorable <clears throat> watch that was forced. Here's the thing. When Looney Tunes was good when Space Jam 1 came out, there's some, like, when the hell was the last time, like, something good from Looney Tunes came out? Right. Like, yeah. I feel like no one's watching Looney Tunes anymore. And I mean, they had that whole thing with uh, Pe- Pepe Le Pew that they wrote, <laughs> they wrote him out. <laughs> oh, it's like, I, I completely forgot about that. Dude got canceled. But it's just like surpri- Lo- Looney Tunes were so much better. He didn't want to get when it came out. Yeah. Uh, is that the reason why? <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised they didn't write off Speedy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. Racist. Yeah. That kind of felt a little like, oh. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I guess he gets a pass. Yeah, I it's guess. Weird. It's one of those weird lines. It's like, it's it's racist if you do, racist if you don't. So we just won't touch it. Didn't, <laughs> wasn't it, didn't somebody like famous do that voice though? I don't remember. Oh, but what's his name? The fat comedian. Fat Spanish comedian. Puffy? He, He's oh, like, oh, I'm fluffy. No, you like fluffy. Him. fluffy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's his name? Iglesias. Yeah, right? Gabriel Iglesias, Gabriel right? Iglesias. He did his voice? I believe so. You're getting fact checked, so you want to say Yeah, by fact it? checked. Yeah, I you think, I think so. You got him fact checked. Yeah, why not? If I'm wrong, oh well. All right. Well, what did you guys give this out of? How do you rank movies these days? You guys still go out of ten? Two out of ten. Two out. Pfft. Two out. You the one who I said knew- it was bearable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still Looney Tunes, though. I mean, well, I, I wanted to make that last point. The tunes are just so much better yeah. than the original. Yeah. The, the, the tunes. They all, all feel like they have their each individual personalities. And this one, they were just all annoying <laughs> i think jordan yeah. was the best i think jordan was my favorite in the first one and the tunes were my favorite in this part the tunes is what made this movie bearable for me okay little rel rel right that's how you say it. Yeah. little he was hilarious he was probably my favorite and he, he was, was only funny. yeah he's like did i die he's like yeah he was i was funny. just in an elevator and i was cracking up <laughs> I, that was very funny Harry um johnson was a nice touch yeah that was cool um and, but this movie was like, there was a part of this movie that you would have thought, okay, Nerd Soup wrote this. You know, like Harry Potter. And then, you know, getting Foghorn Leghorn off the dragon in Game of Thrones. And then you have all the White Walkers on the bench or behind the bench. I mean, by the way, costumes are terrible. I don't know if you guys noticed oh, that yeah, in the, the back. Oh, yeah, the White Walkers, yeah. Oof, that was, ugh. <laughs> I guess <laughs> after season eight, they just didn't care. I guess... After yeah, it's a reflection yeah. on season eight. I guess it's just over with at this it point. It was just yeah. reference, reference, reference. Remember this, you know this, you know this, and so many movies these days have been doing that. The Lego Movie did it brilliantly. Oh, um, you know, but they were very much the first movie in in recent times to take that approach. It's not an. I mean, yeah, I am kind of sick of it. But like I said, it felt like initially there was going to be a, a small little commentary on why this needs to stop. And that would have been cool. And I think that would have been a better movie if LeBron saved Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I kind of want to go back on the players because it, it did bother me. I feel we didn't really touch on that much. The first one, when you watch Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing and Larry, uh, who's it? Toll. Toll uh, like Sean, Sean Bradley. Bradley. Sean Bradley. When you watch Muggsy them and, and, and Muggsy all lose their powers, like you felt bad for him. <laughs> yeah. And then they felt, and like they followed the, the movie followed those characters as it went, and I feel like like you got involved in the movie, and with the villains, like you just you felt them more. Yeah, I felt nothing. I I I didn't even know who the who the girl players were. Diana like, Taurasi. I I didn't know the other like you one. don't like they, they don't show any of these players. They show them shooting around at, at practice. Yeah, like yeah, that he just videotaped them. And yeah, he, they bring them into the algorithm. That they took so much from the original movie, but forgot to. Just give their own movie personality. It's a sequel, so of course some things are going to be similar. The montage in the beginning, they gave Jordan the montage, yeah. they gave Braun the montage. That's a, a good callback. But too many callbacks where 
it's kind of a reflection of the whole premise of the movie. You remember this? You know this IP? You know this yeah. IP? Remember this from the first one? This is similar. This is similar. Oh, th- this feels, uh, play with NBA superstar. This feels oddly familiar. But this, yeah. <laughs> and there's, uh, even when and Jordan And one of them gives- is his teammates, though. That's it. That, how there is no dynamic, not to cut you off, I'm sorry, but there was no, no for- dynamic between LeBron or Anthony Davis. Yeah. Motherfucker, you just won a championship with him. What do you mean? There's only two lines between you He's saying, like, "Damn, what they do to my boy AD?" You know, like. And in the end of the original, Jordan goes back. He has that great scene with them in the gym. Yeah, yeah. touch the ball. They're all scared. They don't know what's going on. The original's a good movie. It is. It is a good movie. It's yeah. not a great movie. Yeah. It may be a six out of ten or five and a half out of ten. I would say like them. a seven. Yeah. This so. is. This was a four. People need to also, uh, it pisses me off so much. The whole, it's a kid's movie. Oh, tell that to Pixar. Tell that to DreamWorks. Mm -hmm. Tell that to the Mitchells versus the Machines, which is number one on so many people's lists right now for best movies of 2021. That you don't get a pass. Yeah. Just because it's a kid's movie. Monsters Inc., Toy Story. So my favorite movies are kids' (laughs) movies. That's a good point. You know, I never thought of that. I feel like Luca is still a kid's movie, but it's, I almost cried in Luca. It what? hits so many, so many different beats on it. I don't know. Kids well, movies don't What was need a to jazz movie movies. that recently just Soul? Sold. Soul? I yeah, cried that, twice yeah. in Soul. Yeah, that's a crazy good movie. Right. You know, you and that's a kid's a movie. That's not an, a no. that's, a, that's a good point. You, you know, I never thought of it that way. You're, it's like you you almost know what you're doing around here. I should start here. my own podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, you should talk about that sometime. Well, that's Space Jam 2 review, a new legacy. Space Jam 3 with R.J. Barrett. When? Yes. Maybe in 15 years. You think Zion's getting one? <laughs> well, I like one of the writers suggested The Rock, and he goes back to wrestling. Bro, you know who I thought could I have been? I hate that. You know that, real quick, you know that they were supposed to have a space jam with Tiger Woods? Yeah, I saw that. And Michael Jordan was supposed to be in it, but young Tiger Woods is supposed to have his own space jam. I don't know why, I just thought Tiger Woods died. <laughs> oh, I oh. thought you were getting sad because he kept giving you details on this movie that never happened. No, I thought, for a second, I just thought Tiger Woods died. I was like, wait, no. All right, we're moving on here to stories about good movies. So apparently, the yeah. Blade movie has found its director. It's going to be Bassam Tariq. He's an up-and-coming director. This uh, this year, he has a movie coming out with Riz Ahmed called Mogul Mowgli. It's about a Pakistani-British rapper who comes down with a disease, and it's got 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Hasn't come out yet for in the United States, but it's already been screened for critics for a long time, and apparently it's great. But yeah, no, he is their choice to direct the Vampire Hunter movie starring Mahershala Ali. Uh, apparently, it was a months-long search, and they brought in the shortlist, they made their pitches, and Bassam Tariq was the one who was chosen. I think this is a movie that superhero fans are excited about. Nash, this may be something that's more up your alley, because yeah. it, is, it isn't the conventional superhero story. He's half human, half vam- vampire, and he exists in the underworld of the MCU. So a lot of his story doesn't really, he doesn't cross over with Iron Man and Cap. It's its more horror than it is superhero. You want to, this movie is going to be unique. I didn't sell him whatsoever. No, I was just thinking, all right, I got a clove of garlic. Seen, you've never seen Blade? Motherfucker's with dead. With Wesley Snipes? What? I'm sorry? you never seen Blade with Wesley Snipes? Bits and pieces. Uh, you gotta watch those. those Don't movies, tell me what to do. Those movies still hold up, but. Don't tell me what to do. What separates Marvel from other, from like these other big companies is the fact that they got an up and coming director. It's going to be unique. And I think that's what makes Marvel so great is because they don't, they pick these, these directors who are trying to make a name for themselves. So they're not stuck in their ways where they're so stubborn to Kevin Feige or, but Kevin Feige will also let the director work. Yeah. And I think with Blade, like I mentioned with Nash, is that it does operate in its own sort of pocket underworld universe. There's potential for crossover with other characters, like a Moon Knight um, and uh, some of the other supernatural characters that exist. But you can very much do your own thing without having it to connect to the other MCU movies, to an Avengers movie or to some of these other crossover films. I think Blade can appear in those movies as Blade. But they're going to be very much doing their own thing. But yeah, you're, you're not you're not restricted to the continuity of Marvel with this movie. Yeah, and that's what makes it so great. Well, what's going to make it great? And also, is this movie going to be rated R? I, or is it locked into the PG thirteen? I think it was confirmed as PG thirteen. They're that's probably unfortunate. going mm. to stretch the limits of the rating. I hope so because that's unfortunate. Because what made because n- n- it's not what made Blade so good, but it is a very gory movie. Right. 
The Wesley Science one, at least. Yeah, yeah, hard R. <laughs> yeah, that's I, hard R is an understatement too. I think we should just get rid of all the ratings. No, you need ratings. Like, it used to be like that. Back no, in the day. put some hair on some of these kids' chests or wherever they have hair. And have you seen Resident kids- Evil? I have. It's it's like that. The first the, the first blades is like the first Resident Evil. Okay. With the vampires and zombies, with how gory it is. All right. Mila Djokovic is going to be in this. Is she really? <laughs> got him. Oh, come on. I got to stay on my feet on that <laughs> <That's> one. How- <laughs> it's blowing by on yeah, you. Yeah, I just hit you with the D Wade terrible pump fake. Yeah. You just oh. I know you said, uh, you said you said that young, you just jumped backwards into me. <laughs> so, what's the underworld for Marvel, though? Is that like Daredevil and. and no, uh, no, no. Supernatural characters. Deadpool? No, okay. no. Yeah, it's um like I said, Moon Punisher. Knight because Moon Knight they have similar villains. I don't really know a lot of the. Can those guys cross over though? I feel like if you're gonna cross over, though, that would be the people you cross it over with. Is Deadpool, Punisher, Daredevil, Spider Man maybe? <sighs> with Blade? Yeah. Well, like I said, Blade crosses over. I'm pretty sure he crosses over a lot with Moon Knight. So and okay. and, and, and like I said, I'm not too familiar with those other characters. If we had your brother here, I bet he would know. Yeah. Who Blade uh, likes to work with? I think at times he's also worked right with Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. Who who does Blade fuck with? Are they like goth or emo? Since they're vampires, kinda. Yeah. Like listening like My Chemical Romance, <laughs> drinking like. <laughs> they had know. that joke in the first Deadpool when they show up, like the bad guys show up in all black, and uh, T.J. Miller's like, you know, have fun at your midnight screening of Blade Two. <laughs> <laughs> So we we might see (laughs) Blade and uh, Deadpool operating in the same movie after getting that joke. Wow. Look at that. I'm excited for this. Yeah, I think Mahershal is going to kill it. That's that's the selling point. Yeah. Is that he's he's an actor who's picked so many great roles over the years that have warranted award consideration. He's won two, (laughs) winning for Moonlight and Green Book. This movie won't be one of those, but I think right here is a chance he's on it. It's like... I think he is producing it. He called Feige and said, I want to be Blade. And Feige was like, whatever you say, sir. Uh, <laughs> so Feige was like, wow, we just sir, pulled Marshall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Feige's like, I'm a genius. <laughs> I did this. <laughs> There's no one I can't get. It's Taking the credit. <laughs> uh, I love that. That's great. Yeah. I think this will be good. And uh, Is there a time frame when this would set? I guess it, it, we're still early, right? There's... Is it in Transylvania? No, not not like where it's set. Like blip, after blip, post blip. In a coffin? Uh, b- before blip. <laughs> I think right now we can get the during during the blip with Blade because everyone's wiped out and now this is their chance for the vampires to come out. Yeah, but you're not going to... Blade doesn't need... But the vampires well, are vampire hiding Blade. away, so there has to be a reason yeah. why they come out though, right? Or is this know. just, are they really just that underworld where yeah, no, no one fucks with them? Very like, no one's very much underworld. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, they do come out, obviously. That's why he's there hunting them. Yeah. Does he suck blood? Yeah. No, yeah. He, he's a, he is a vampire, isn't he? No, he's half vampire. So does he do that with his enemies or he's just like, yo, what's up, dude? Like a random person. No, he can control it. Oh, he controls it. Yeah, it's like in True Blood. He's got the ah. fridge. He's got nice little blood cocktails. You watch True Blood? Or you just know that? I just, I remember that one scene that stuck in my head. <laughs> my mom was ago. obsessed with cocktails, blood. huh? <laughs> well, that's, that's what they used to do, right? It was yeah. like a hotel fridge and just had blood in it. Well, they would like, they would like Jesus. feast off of bodies. Like they would hold them captive and like feast off them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But where is he Tough getting, life. where is he getting the blood? Does he have a blood dealer? Does he? Yeah. He is a blood guy. He's got a blood guy. Yeah. It's played. Can I get it. But you got to have the best of the best. You got to have like the guy that created the morgues. No, he's like got Seymour from Little Shop of Horror. That oh. guy's got all the blood. <laughs> I mean, that's a connection. <laughs> Damn. Imagine <laughs> Rick Moranis in this movie. <laughs> dapping him some blood. That's, uh... Oh, wait, Space Jam. Wait, oh, yeah. I, I, I love that Rick and Morty that came through with Taz. <laughs> Someone said that uh, they knew the movie was going to be shit, so they just got out of there. That's hilarious. <laughs> Skedaddled right out. All right, let's move on to the next. It's not a director, it's an actor joining a movie. Antonio Banderas. Oh, put some boots. Putting down the Heinekens and strapping up for Indiana Jones 5. Not Wait a lot a of minute, details. Though. He's not in the Heineken commercial. I need to keep going it quick. Up. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> well, <laughs> I always get them. I can't say him. I always get them tongue-tied. Oh, boy. Jack Ni- Nicholson, right? Yeah, not yeah. Nicholas. You're yeah. the golfer. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I just before. Wait, why, why are you bringing up Jack Nicholson? Because is this going to be Morgan Freeman and Nicholson? 
fucking like pounding around <laughs> with Banderas and Harrison Ford. <laughs> You're talking about the bucket list? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're so old, man. I Come know. on. How are they going to play Indy? Yeah. What, what the hell are they going to do? I get it. Banderas, you know, he's a good name. You know, it's not like he's a bad actor. You know, more actors, more good actors, the better. Right? I mean, he's still 60. It's different when you're 60 and then yeah, but Indy... still get away with it. Harrison Ford is 78. <laughs> you kidding? What the hell is he going to do? And he was... Collect social security. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. He could barely run in The Force Awakens, and that was six years ago. When he punches one of the henchmen, <laughs> so unconvincing. I hope it, it, they put Indy in a role where, you know, he could still travel the world and stuff, but... I don't want to see him jumping fences like Liam Neeson and taking 17 cuts. Yeah, show that he's this young. I think that would be a better route than like CGIing him, CGI him young or show him doing they something are he really do, can't do. They're, they're, there's going to be a flashback where they make him look young, where it's going to be young Harrison yeah. Ford. They've already shown the set photos of him in the dots. Shia like, LaBeouf was supposed to take over after the last movie, and that oh. movie was panned, and then he was canceled. Oh, yeah, that's right. Is he canceled, canceled, or is he like canceled for now and then he's coming back? Or is he well, done? I mean, if Spacey can make it back, I think anybody can. Spacey made it back? Well, the bad thing yeah, about new movie is that he admitted to it. So. Yeah. They're coming for him right now. <laughs> I was reading uh, on the outline that you sent me. I didn't check, uh, but I take your word for it, um, that Harrison Ford got hurt while recording this or filming this yeah apparently he hurt his shoulder and they had to shut down production for a bit so let me get this straight <laughs> they're gonna do a flashback of him but by you know he's still gonna be 76 years old hurt and they're gonna be able to sell him being young <laughs> like it's like we watched the original indiana jones movies we don't remember him having arthritis you know like why it's, is there so much clicking and clacking <laughs> is there a young actor tied to this like, could this be a movie where he's handing the torch over? Boyd Holbrook seems to be the youngest actor they have. Mads Mikkelsen, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is also, they're also confirmed. Because we talk about movies that, and we get questions of movies that could use a reboot. And I think a good reboot of Indiana Jones is in order. Yeah, I think this is a franchise that it doesn't warrant it, but if you want to revive it, you reboot it instead of going back and yeah. trying to DH Harrison Ford or having him as an older man trying to still run around and play a young man's game. You can there's there's I mean, there's continuity in those first three or four movies, but you can do the recast and say this is the same guy, it's just a different actor, a James Bond type of situation, yep. new adventures with Indy in. The 50s or the 60s, whatever decade you But there's so much you, you can do. There's in. so much shit you can do. It's not like it's a story. It's just, it's him going on an adventure. You can do anything you want. Yeah, it's an adventure of the week type of character. Right. Where it is just, it's a new thing. They've chosen to go in the opposite direction. What else is new? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's been in production now for, for years. Because um, they announced it at one of those Lucasfilm festival things or, or um uh, convention like comic-con kind of thing yeah yeah it was the Luke, the lucasfilm convention or D disney e3 whatever the fuck <laughs> lucas <called>. con yeah <laughs> that this was going to be happening but it's it's taken a long time and now it's got antonio banderas so, are you a big indie fan i like the indie movies i don't like, them, like them as you're much like as a, other people you're like a follower right like a trekkie no there's not enough there you know, Star Trek, there's like a million shows, a million episodes. Yeah, I wonder, is there a fan base for, is there like a big fan base for Indiana Jones? I think Indy's iconic. Yeah. I think you get, Indy gets people out to the theaters. Speaking of. The last movie made money. Actually, Town Hall, when I was younger, they were showing on the big projector. Oh, look at that full circle. Big uh, projector of uh, one of the Indiana Jones movies. And I went and watched. I probably didn't have plans. <laughs> <laughs> It's just you. Yeah. The projector. Just yeah. yeah. There's you no one microwave there. Microwave popcorn. Just trying to move in next to everybody. I can go for a good town hall projector movie. They used to do that. I I used, all the time. I saw Wild Thornberries on the town hall projector. Yes, me too. Yeah. You yeah. saw that? Yeah. With the Rugrats? Yeah. Yeah. We were probably there. We didn't even know it. Oh, didn't even know each other. Wow. What a nice combo that is. That's Get a nice crossover. Microwave popcorn. You what? got your sleeping bag. It was Take nice. your bets right now. What's going to be better? The Scooby Doo and Courage or the Rugrats and Wild Thornberries? See, the thing is, hear me out. I feel like Scooby and Courage are two and three, like in popularity wise. 
And I feel like Rugrats, Thornberries are one and four. Mm, interesting. So okay. I think that the two and three would be. I don't think Thornberries are that high, but they're. Okay. I have them at four. I have Rugrats at one, Scooby at two. Yeah. No, I'm saying. I well, maybe Rug- Scooby. Scooby's more popular than Rugrats, actually. Yeah. 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 More so, iconic. Easily. Yeah. So the one and three over the two and four. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> the Courage of Cowardly Dog Scooby Doo crossover. <laughs> it's going to be so ridiculous. I hope it's good. I hope it's just funny. It's going to be good no matter what. The, like Courage is so much funnier than those old Scooby Doo cartoons. Mm-hmm. Courage was just so, the clip I sent you guys today with the Hunchback. <laughs> so you, many. They're of like, those. you have a room for me, and Eustace doesn't even say no. He just screams. Yeah. He's just like, ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, nothing like that used to happen in Scooby Doo. No, Courage is written by some some messed up people. <laughs> I think the guy. It, you can fact check me on this too. But oh, you were I, right about Gabriel, Gabriel and Grace. Uh, I was right, right? Yeah. Ingl- okay, so, uh, so now I'm feeling good. So I get another challenge. Right. Um, I believe the writer of <laughs> Courage. <laughs> I believe the writer of Courage did have schizophrenia. Well, it's like the same thing with Rugrats. They said the people that wrote Rugrats had schizophrenia. Well, that was like the, the whole, yeah, it. the theories behind it. But I well, think you mean, that. Do you think he actually had? I uh, no, I think he definitely had it. It's right. one man with multiple personality disorder writing all these classic. It makes sense. Shows. I mean, yeah, they're pretty. <laughs> and did you know that one? You know that episode of that zombie director? Yeah, that's supposed to be Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> okay, yeah, it looks like him. And you know that I, I don't know why I know all these courage facts. I was a big courage you guy. Know why? So. This is what you do at night when you're up on your phone at one a.m. You're reading courage. True. Facts. Yeah. Um, that it actually got a, a one of the episodes got an Emmy uh, nomination. Oh wow! And is it Emmy? No, Emmy. Yeah, yeah, Emmy. yeah, Emmy. Right. TV? Uh, yes, TV. The uh, the Duckling Brothers. Oh man! When they had the duck yeah. in the in the kitchen and the two <laughs> space ducks, <laughs> that one apparently got an Emmy nod. That show deserved way more Emmys than that. I just don't get how directors don't take one of those episodes and turn it into a movie. Like those are terrifying. Like some like Freaky Fred would be an absolute banger of a horror movie. And it's a genre where we always criticize the lack of quality movies and films. And then you have this kids show from the early 2000s that was just doing it week to week to week, season after season, banging them out. These it says that uh, and scary villains. It says the the creator. I can't find if he has schizophrenia or not. Okay, he says that he was trying to scare kids in his in his kids show. So he has to be <laughs> schizophrenic if he's saying <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Nickelodeon was good at that back in the day. Ren and Are Stimpy was another dark? one. Yeah, Ren and Stimpy. That was, was just a fucked up show. Even uh, Rocco's Modern Life was weird. But That's they pushed the limits, though. Things were a lot different, like, viewing-wise. Like, there wasn't this big censorship on kids back in the day. Well, some of the kids' shows today are pretty good. People really love... Uh, I hear... I haven't seen it, but I hear Adventure Time is incredible. It is Just very a good. good show. Yeah, it is very Rick good. Morty? I mean, it's, that, that, that's more of an adult yeah, show, right? Adult. I hear there are some good kid shows. I mean, with kid shows, it's always going to be my generation was better. Yeah, 100%. but ours was. 100%. Oh, there was an- there's really another is, show. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank on it. It's on Cartoon Network. It's another another show like that, like Adventure Time. Um, oh, I'm, I know what you're talking about. I can't. I can't think of the name, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, you mull on that. We're going to move on to this next topic. <laughs> Got it. Uh, all right, let's move on to another casting here. We have <laughs> Leslie Grace. Is, has been cast as Barbara Gordon, better known as Batgirl, in the upcoming DC film that will focus on Batgirl. Um, and it's only coming to HBO Max. Was it, that was interesting about this story, is that it's not going to come out in theaters. I, I kind of hate that, because I want to see the Batgirl movie in theaters. Yeah. And that gives me CW vibes, because Warner Brothers live-action television is terrible. <laughs> it's not that good. Is it kind of like you think they know what they have right now? And they don't want to risk it putting it in the movies? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Like they know it's not going to be perceived that well in the theaters? So there's pretty Well, no, it hasn't started. But I'm saying that when, when it does start, this isn't oh. a good sign. It's This is just a casting, so it's not oh. filming. Yeah, no. This Didn't is, they uh, like have like a final like three people that – I was reading that they had three people. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure. I was getting some coffee at work and it was on the news. Well, she was just in In the Heights and she was oh, fantastic. Okay. She was so, really good. You get what's hot. That's it. Right. Yeah. That's what you get. <laughs> I mean, in the heist didn't do that good, though. No, it did not. <laughs> it I heard it was fantastic, though. I really liked it. 
One of my buddies, uh, our buddy Joe, the one that recorded the race, he said he loves the movie. Really? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, get Whoa. Joe on the podcast. Whoa. I didn't know Joe watched that. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, good song. He was singing it while we uh, caught five wins in Call of Duty last night. Five, Ted. Good for you. Without you. <laughs> five. Batgirl is one of my favorite characters from the comics, and I've I've been dying to see her see her in live action for a long time. It's kind of disappointing knowing that she's not going to be crossing over with Robert Pattinson's Batman. Maybe she doesn't exist in that same universe. I just can't wrap my head around DC. Never say never. Yeah, never say never. (laughs) At least with DC, right? (laughs) Yeah, it's always good when you have somebody that's, I guess, passionate about, you know, like like you said that she worked with the comics, right? Yeah. So that's... That's always a good sign. Yeah, it's always a good sign. So... Maybe, maybe you just be patient and then my boy Bobby Pats might be rolling through, you know, showing Batwoman a good time. <laughs> Bobby Pats. Bobby Pats. If you watch it here, I'll watch it with you. <laughs> well, we're going to all be watching it on HBO Max, unfortunately. So My brother said everyone. Oh, yeah? For uh, Blade. He's an Avenger right now in the comics. Yeah. I mean, but that the comics. I don't do like that. that. Sure. I wouldn't want to see that. But the like, if you go back to the the core of Blade when they had Blade first Dracula was coming art. out, right? <laughs> he was he does his own thing. Yeah, he doesn't have to be. Everyone's been an Avenger in the comics. Right. Every single fucking character has been an Avenger. So he really is an emo and goth. He just does his own thing. Can yeah. you see? I I the world against him. <laughs> the world is dark. picture the last fight in Endgame. Can you see Blade there? I can't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to suck your blood. <laughs> yeah, real intimidating. I don't know. I guess I got to watch uh, Wesley. Uh, no, no taxes in the original one. So you might like those movies. The first two are good. The third one's a little shaky. Okay. Blade Two. People swear by Blade Two. Man, they put it top I would. ten superhero I would. movies. No, not superhero movies. Blade top two. ten movies. No, just like top ten. Like no top action. five. <laughs> Action kind of gore movie, fight movie. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's, it's in, it is a superhero It's like movie. a Yeah, I know, but superhero movies. When you're like, talking about gory, are we talking like about right like now. Saw gory or? Yeah. The first Blade? Yeah. Yeah. It no, gets like he, that? He cuts motherfuckers up, man. It's rated R. It's a rated R movie. There's no wiggle room. <laughs> All right, last story you, here. We have the McKay- <laughs> I was going to say something really bad. Yeah, thank God you cut me off. Oh, that's perfect timing. <laughs> I was going to say I got a hand job watching Saw on the so movie. why you say it? What? <laughs> Michaela Cole from I May Destroy You. She was actually just nominated for an Emmy for this show. She's part of that stacked category with Anya Taylor Joy and Elizabeth Olsen and uh, Cynthia Irvino. Queen's Gambit. I, I don't know who I'm pulling for with that category, but she has been cast in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. We don't have a, a character name or a role, and this is a movie we've mentioned it several times on the podcast that is undergoing several rewrites. Looks like they're they're having a, I don't want to say a hard time, but you would think they are though a difficult time of trying to pin <laughs> this easy. down. Loki may have just given them the uh, perfect opportunity here, so yep. maybe this will be the final rewrite. But Michaela Cole, I, I'm more familiar with her from her appearances on Black Mirror. She was kind of a reoccurring character on that show. She would appear in the the different episodes. Obviously, all the episodes are different, playing different characters. And I hear I May Destroy You is a fantastic show. I just wanted to get that in there because it was announced today, last minute. I think there was another story that was just announced, but we're going to fucking no, but, questions. No, but hold on. It, it, is, it is promising, though, getting something from this movie. And that they have some kind of premise of what they want to do. Because, unfortunately, you know, with the untimely demise, I didn't know how they were going to pit, like, put back together black panther because that that was that was such a perfect role for uh chavik bozeman and he did it so perfect where it's like you kind of wish you kind of hope that they would just keep it where it is and not like kind of ruin it so i i just hope they have an idea of what they want to do and they and they nail on it i got a question for you bo okay have you ever thought about maybe becoming like a adam schefter or an adrian warjanowski of like hollywood no you never want to do that? No. Like insider breaks, like, oh my God, casting of this. I Who's think Teddy going? would be better at that. Are you kidding? You know how to schmooze. schmooze I can schmooze too. Well, you mean like if I get yeah, like an agent's number and you are the schmooze over there? What are you talking about? It's, it's easier in sports than in Hollywood. 
the sports you have the leagues and you it's the same owners all the time hollywood's right. always changing you know yeah. It's yeah, producers but you, are moving yeah but you can cover like certain like oh like a20 studio a24 or lions gate or something like are you that like, to push me out of the pod <laughs> i think that you could yes <laughs> <laughs> perfect transition yeah. question i think that you could do anything <laughs> That's for the fan to decide. Yay! People, you call up to the show, you better be ready. That's what you're supposed to do. Sitting there arguing and trying to spell your name and all of this other stuff. It's not your show, it's my show. I'm giving you the, the opportunity to speak your mind. Don't call up here unless you got something to say. This question here from Lover Girl at Sun Warriors. Favorite comfort movie or TV show? Lately, mine's been Law & Order SVU. That's it's a always, big one for a lot of people. TV show, it's always Sunny in Philadelphia time. or Seinfeld. Movie, South Park. Movie, Men in Black. What's, what's, another, what's another Rain movie? My ultimate comfort TV show will always be Parks and Rec. I could throw that on at any time, let it play in the background. Hey, I would say The Office, but I can't watch it anymore because I refuse to get Peacock. Oh, I thought Comedy Central you plays refuse it to get bullied religiously. I don't like The Office. I, I refuse to get bullied by peacock for taking it off of netflix <laughs> I'm trying to think of a movie that i like a comfort movie i guess it's <sighs> the first men in black and bad boys fresh prince of bel-air is another one that's a good comfort one yeah comfort movies i, I don't really have a lot of comfort movies yeah. it's always shows because when i want to be in that zone i'm you don't want to think yeah with movies i always find myself having to focus even if i'm just trying to relax yeah no that's true you can tell you can tell the, the Throw the TV show on. Check your phone here and there. Like the other day, I did that with Thor Ragnarok. I was like, oh, I'm just going to throw this on. I ended up watching it with my hand on my chin the entire time. <laughs> yeah, because what movie is <laughs> just like... The, last, the next <laughs> fucking six movies. You <laughs> might see something that you didn't the first time. Where yeah. in shows, that's not like some... Well, most of the time, it's not a big deal if you miss something in a show. You know, it's just nonchalantly just going. But a movie, there's, you know, minute there's details. Reasoning, there's that, there's right. reasoning by each right. scene. Yeah, right, we're getting off so. the topic. <laughs> <laughs> this question here from Trey at CW underscore Riley 3. What's up, Trey? In your opinion, how does Space Jam 2 impact LeBron in the GOAT debate? I, if anything, it makes Jordan better. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Well, on my letterbox review, I put MJ wins this round, but LeBron's still the GOAT. And, of course, I got two com- I never get comments on my letterbox reviews, ever. <laughs> but you say LeBron's better than Jordan, they just... Yep. They like the it clown. It's like, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> the it clown made an appearance to the game, too. Yeah, just, yeah. You know, yeah he did. Terrible costume. Yeah, the movie for kids, right? The it clowns and the, yeah, the nuns there. from a horror movie from like the fifties. <laughs> you know, um, I guess it doesn't really do anything um, basketball wise. You, you know, back to the review. Jordan felt like he won something. Yeah, you know what I mean. It felt like he won a chip. Like goes back to his baseball team and the spaceship. His family's there. Do yeah. do do do. Fly like, like an eagle. He has a whole I'm back thing, man. He comes back. <laughs> And what then is, look. Wait, what does he say before he starts shooting around? Let's see if I could still do this. Something like that. Yeah. It's a perfect line. That and look, Stan introduces him when he's coming down from the spaceship at the baseball game. Like yeah. the chemistry between them two was just electric. Michael Jordan. Yeah, no, LeBron's still better. Yeah, no, he's the GOAT. Yeah. But And we're gonna get tweeted. That's fine. Come at me, dog. <laughs> this question here from Gabe Fulton at Gabe Fulton fifty four. Are Gabe. you worried that Dune will be a massive flop? I have a feeling that it has too much weight on its shoulders. I'm only worried that it will flop because people aren't going to know about it. And they're not going to be urged to go get it because I don't think they're going to put enough out for people to see. Like, to hype it up. I think There that, is a worry that it's going to flop. And it would that would really upset me. See, another thing that also, why uh, just to go back to what we were talking about with the promotion of this movie. I mean, if you just look at the cast alone, uh, you could put those names on a list and it, the movie could be about like a circus and people are still going to go watch because of just the, uh, the star power in this movie is incredible. I can't see it flopping due to that star power alone. But I mean, the, you know, the trailer, again, like I said, if that was just the movie right there, I would have enjoyed it. These actors and actresses have millions of followers. They need to start pressing this movie on their social media. This is why you have social media. Yeah. yeah but then you look thirsty. You don't look thirsty. You're promoting your movie. Yeah, That's not but thirsty. 
Kevin then, Hart does come off as a little thirsty whenever he's got a movie out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he, it's not Dune, obviously. It gets it More gets people watched. Are though. Excited probably about Dune. <laughs> it it kind of you Promote know yourself, man. No, nah, you kind of just let your acting speak for yourself. <laughs> That's a fear in the back of everyone's minds. Everyone who wants this movie to succeed. It's it's more possible that it flops than it hits a billion. Yeah. It's 100%. closer to a flop than it will be closer to a billion. Uh, what we want, what you really want is the movie to break even and make a sizable enough profit for part two. And then maybe part two does even better, right? Get more word of mouth if the movie's really great. How long, how long until this comes out? October and- 22nd. We got some time. Yeah. We got some time. All right. This question here from DGA. DGA. Baseball question. Ooh. Is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. the future of the sport? He leads the MLB in everything but average. <laughs> yes. Well, he's second in average home runs and slugging. Yes. Why does he's it incredible. seem like he's, yeah, why does it seem like he is, but why is, does it seem like MLB isn't like pressing him? It's the same well, with Mike Trout too. It's well, the same with Dune. <laughs> it's MLB running the marketing. If for you Dune, looked, basically. if you looked at MLB's marketing, you would think Aaron Judge is the best player in the league. Yeah, they're so well, reliant. Fantastic. But I mean, even Mookie Betts is amazing, and they don't press him either. Well, he's, he's having a pretty bad season. The only stars not a Mookie in Betts baseball season, these I days say. are either if you're a fucking pitcher, home run hitter, yeah, Otani, and there's one of those, or if you're the yeah. best player on the Yankees. They're so reliant on that New York market. When ESPN comes out with their 100 most powerful figures in sports or popular there's no baseball players it's Not very one. it's very hard to promote yourself in baseball due to the amount that they play so i mean you're playing 162 games plus if you get the playoffs when you have time to promote yourself to do commercials to do all of this baseball is a sport where you need to constantly be hitting fielding doing this and that the mlb itself the league does a horrible job promoting their players yeah the mlb they, has to do yeah it. That, they have That's to do the it like the MLB has to know it's what they Judge, have. you would think Judge, uh, Tatis, and Otani, and then everybody else kind of just sucks. It's like, or Jake, and I mean, not for nothing, like Jacob DeGrom, people, I, I guess it's because it's New York, but I, I just feel like the MLB doesn't promote him as much as they should. He's the best pitcher in the game right now. He might be the best pitcher, Ever. I mean, if he has one more season like he, he's doing, he might be the best pitcher of all time. I mean, yeah. But Vlad Guerrero Jr., yeah, he's gonna he has a shot to be the face of the league. Um, that kid has got uh, he's like his his father's swing to like a T, like and one of the best bad ball hitters already. And what is he like twenty three? Yeah, you even know? if you look at the NFL, like to go on your point, the NFL and the NBA, it seems like they have like thirty superstars. Yeah, that can they, take over the league. They're amazing at promoting their sports. Well, the NBA is the best at it. The NBA is this one sport, they always say, where one guy can have just a tremendous impact on the game. So I think that lends itself to it. And the NBA has also done a great job of turning itself into a soap opera. Yeah. The uh, the drama, the narratives, the rivalries, the beefs. Sports do need to be more like WWE. Not in the sense that it's fake. But all the stuff that goes around it, that truly does benefit the NBA. Yeah. They're like rappers these days. They're like rock stars. The way they live. I mean, when I look at certain players, some young guys, I'm like, is this guy more focused on being famous or does he actually want to get better as a basketball player? That's like a legitimate. It's always been kind of a question in the NBA, but I think it's at its worst now. When I watch, I think LaMelo Ball is a great talent, but he doesn't seem like a gym rat to me. Yeah. I can't really see him. He, he doesn't. I don't know if he has the same mindset as like a Tatum, where Tatum very much cares about his craft and working on his game. Lamelo seems to be more of. Uh, he likes the spotlight. Of yeah, it all. He that's likes what the NBA the, is now, man. You're the so social right. media aspect of it all. It's a spotlight fucking sport. Yeah, it's it, like like you they said, it's a double edged sword. Yeah. Because like, look, the NBA season's been over for two days and probably later tonight we'll get some kind of big news. The NBA is a constant yeah. year-round sport. It's become a 12-month sport. Yeah, it's general hospital in the off-season, soap opera, and then during the season it's, I, you know, just... Just I, as good. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, now with the movement, too, in the, in the middle of the season you get movement. Hey, look at how this st- season started with Harden. <laughs> yeah. so ridiculous, him showing up fat and... Missing shots and shit. And now Aaron Rodgers being the way that he is too yeah. with the NFL. The NFL always is buzzing throughout the year. They, they could be better at that as well. 
They do it better than the MLB, but they could be better at promoting their stars. I mean, MLB, they... Their stars, though, stay with their teams longer than NBA. Yeah. NBA teams, like, the star can be, like, Harden, man. He went to the Rockets, and now he's gone, and now he's with the Nets. Chris and Paul. He's like, Chris Paul's on a different team every year. <laughs> yeah. And it's Chris Paul. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's a top five point guard of all time, and no one can identify him with one team. KD. You think of Chris Paul, you don't have a team in mind. It's not like a Dwayne Wade instantly Miami or... Uh, LeBron, but even Cleveland. yeah, like LeBron, man. Yeah, he, he yeah. went to four. <laughs> he's at four different teams now. Three. I could talk about Three. this all day, but Soon just to be I got went to next. Cleveland twice. <laughs> yeah, just with the MLB <laughs> too. Left Cleveland twice. Bro. <laughs> it's incredibly hard to stay con- as consistently good. Probably out of yeah. any of the sports, it is it, because of how much they change. Right, like when, Luca is never going to have a year where he averages nineteen. Yeah, and shoots thirty nine percent. Like when but you're good, can, that can happen in the you're MLB. good unless it's injury. Yeah. You know, and you'll get the rare, you know, Tyreek Evans that just absolutely collapses. Or you MLB, know. if you have a two week or a week slump, your average is dropping significantly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at Gary Sanchez. That's his career. You know, yeah. he'll. He, slumping the worst catcher in the league to now he's hot as a fucking now pistol he's, and he's the best and now he's the catcher best catcher in the league yeah. it's, it's hilarious you know the he's narrative's a, changed probably so the second best hitting catcher in the league besides uh, Buster Posey I mean it's incredible um yeah so we're gonna wrap that up because we've been going for it's probably gonna be about hour 40 for this one oof when you throw well in worth it though review. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you Doom. shut down the topics at the end there was, <laughs> yeah 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 it's I, had trying to, at times. I had to shave some of those topics <laughs> i'm trying. sweating at this point you know <laughs> brain power all right guys thanks for listening uh we will be back next week with uh hopefully two podcasts <laughs> uh for nash and teddy i am Bo signing off Teddy, you got anything you want to add in uh i'm going to pick up cauliflower crust pizza <laughs> I just want to say I'm I'm happy to be back getting slurped off by the nerd soup community. <laughs> Look at that. Another eight month hiatus for that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we were making some good points in that video. Hey guys, Aaron and Nerd Soup Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge, so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich. Damn, we were making some good points in that video. Hey guys, Aaron and Nerd Soup Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge, so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich.